Hi there, and welcome to What's New Tonight. I'm shuffling papers audibly, and this is my co host staring at me sideways. Indeed, I am John. The name's not John. Tonight on What's New Tonight, not much because Melbourne's still locked down and you can't do fuck all. Now, next, now, on what's new tonight, the sports. Take it away, Steve. Thanks. Well, today, on sports, two teams participated in a sports match, both playing against one another, attempting to become the victor. The first team, with a name comprised of two words, the first word being a name of their region and or suburb, the second word being a name of an animal starting with the same letter a predictable yet effective display of alliteration. Well, they played against the uh, another team whose name was compro- uh, you know, constructed in a similar fashion, really. Um, one of the teams won, and everyone had a fantastic time. Back to you. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Steve. And now to the weather. Hey there, the weather. Well, Melbourne's not looking too flash this week. Up in the northern suburbs, we have a rather strong certainty of bowl cuts, tote bags, and dangly earrings, with a 95% chance of craft beer. There is a strong northwesterly blowing questionable behaviours and fashions to the western suburbs. This will undoubtedly increase the chance of ironically donned corduroy overalls and overpriced cocks that nobody can pronounce right here to Footscray. You might think the central western suburbs are in for a cold one, as the middle class folk buying all these apartments are all donning north facing Kathmandu puffer jackets. But don't be fooled, warm weather is coming, it's just fashionable to dress up like a sleeping bag. And over to the eastern island, also known as Aotearoa, New Zealand, the weather is looking pretty choice as and generally pretty hard out. North of the equator here, obviously we know there is nothing because the earth consists of a small rectangle and consists only of Australia and New Zealand. Fantastic. Back to you John. The name's not John. What in the blue blazes was that? He barely even mentioned the weather at all. We briefly touched on the aesthetics of youth pop culture and made a rather rudimentary attempt at commenting on class migration. If anything, it was an amateur attempt at expressing sociological observations, which then rapidly segued into conspiracy theory. Who hired this guy? Was it you, Steve? Ah! God, I need a drink. Fantastic! 
Admiring a box this fine is thirsty work. Must see. This box is fantastic. It's now got four sides. It contains things, yet it's not a container, it's a box. You do the math. Put your faith in Brownie. Put your money in my bank account and your records in this box. Fantastic. This box has four sides, two handles, and it holds things. It's the only record I had to hand. You don't have to buy this one. Either. Look at that. Fantastic. You've heard of capitalism. You've heard of economics. You've heard of rogenomics. But have you heard of ergonomics? Because these handles. Whew, whew, they're ergonomic. They're just so damn good. I just don't want to let go. I just. I can't. It's too good! Can't let go! Gah! Whew. So good! I can't even put it into words. I need somebody else to put it into words and articulate how I feel about these handles. Hmm, if only. The Boxes Handles by Rory B. Bellows. <clears throat> the exposed ingrain stands vigilant, proud and strong, juxtaposed against the smooth vanilla sides, comprised of many layers crossed over and over again. It creates a strong unit, a well-orchestrated unification of beauty and strength. The ingrain stands strong and seems to sing out, hold faith, it seems to say, for I am strong. I am the very foundation of hope itself. Put your faith in me, your 12 inch records too. I will hold of them close to my bosom, bosom, bosom. <laughs> the voice fades away as I reach for the exquisite brownies box. I run my index finger along the finely arrased edges. I caress the well sanded sides. The four corners tell a story. A story of hope. And a story of well contained records. In the centre of the opposing sides lay a perfect hand sized aperture. Centered symmetrically with an unfathomable level of accuracy. The handles have been smoothed off, routed with an extreme level of utmost awesomeness. So much so, it is hard to tell where the curve begins and where it ends. There's such a natural curve, it disappears into obscurity, almost as if it was never there at all. My fingers run the length of the well sanded sides and reach the curvature. They slide in almost effortlessly. The handles are indeed endlessly smooth. It is as if my hands are incomplete in their absence. As indeed, as I hold with the vine handles, the box and I became one. I have reached a state of euphoria. Such a state of ecstasy can usually only be found through substance abuse. As my hands merge with the ergonomic confines of the box's handles, I lose myself. It is, is it I who holdeth the box? Or is it indeed the box that holdeth me? But seriously, these boxes hold records. They are record holding, record holders. But don't just take my word for it. We've uh, got a few reviews already. I've actually got a little letter from, um, what do we got here? Ah, little Jimmy from Geelong. Jimmy writes, Dear Brownie, I love my Brownie's box. I put my records in there. Good work. But my dad reckons your boxes are of poor quality. He also says that you're not that funny and a bit of a dick. Hush. Please prove him wrong. Do something cool. If you could drink a whole bottle of Stolly and still make a box, that would be cool. 
Are you sitting around at home still wondering whether or not you need to purchase one of Brownie's boxes? Are you wallowing in perpetual indecision? Are you living in a permanent state of inability to realise that you need one of Brownie's boxes? Wow! Wallow no longer. Let me ease your indecision with referencing an old proverb. Even the most humble of record box embiggens the smallest of spirits. Now, if you haven't heard of the term embiggen, let me assure you it is a perfectly cromulent word. And speaking of cromulence, Brownie's boxes contain that too. Along with your records. Buy one, buy two, buy a bunch. Purchasing things online will momentarily release endorphins. Once you've made the impulse buy, you'll instantaneously be hit with a fleeting feel of satisfaction. Although it will quickly pass, and the crushing reality of everyday life will soon return. <laughs> ah well, by that time I will have your money and it won't be of my concern. But wait, there's more! Well, actually there's not. I've just always wanted to say that. I've also always wanted to say, long time listener, first time caller, but seeing as that you aren't a radio talk show, it is wildly irrelevant. But hey, reach for the stars and do something wacky. Like buy a box of a drunk guy in Footscray. So go on, fulfill your dreams. Go to my Instagram, see what I've got, and DM me for orders. <laughs> Fantastic. So go on, have fun out there. Stay safe and remember, my boxes are stronger than Jonah Lomu, and they won't die from kidney failure. <laughs>